Hello everyone, I'm Fat Nguyen, a student of Perspective 4, the new scientific vision, and today I will be talking about the differences between Descartes and Bacon's methodologies in the scientific methods. Many of you probably are very likely to have heard and learned about the scientific method, but perhaps you haven't heard about the great work that these two thinkers have contributed to it. And I am here to walk you through all of it. So, what is the scientific method? In short, it is the very method that scientists use to correctly arrive at new knowledge as well as to update the previous knowledge about the world. Let us begin with Sir Francis Bacon. He was born in 1561 and is a well-known proponent of inductive reasoning and empiricism, and one of the greatest movers behind the development of the scientific method. At this time, you may wonder, what is inductive reasoning? Inductive reasoning makes broad generalizations from specific observations. This is often known as the bottom-up approach. In more simple terms, conclusions are drawn from several observations. We can break the process of inductive reasoning into four stages. First, observation, collecting data without biases. Second, analysis, classifying the facts and identifying the patterns of regularity. Third, inference, making generalizations about the relations between the facts from the patterns. Fourth and lastly is confirmation, which is testing the inference through further observations. An example of inductive reasoning would be something like, I have seen four white swans four different times. Therefore, all swans are white. Inductive reasoning can be seen as a great opposition of Descartes' concept of deductive reasoning, where we would deduce theorems from first principles that are self-evident, obvious, or directly observable. This is more of a top-down approach because we go from a general assumed truth to a specific and certain conclusion. And here's a fun fact. The first principle that Descartes felt was self-evident was summarized in the popular statement, I think, therefore I am. Another famous example of deductive reasoning is, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. I will discuss more in depth about Descartes' methodology later on in the video, where deductive reasoning will play a big role. Next, let us understand empiricism. It is the belief that sense experience is the ultimate source of all of our concepts and knowledge. In his book, The New Organon, or The New Method, Bacon was critical of the previous methodologies which would jump from a few particular observations to some axioms, and then deduce those axioms through syllogistic demonstration which is aiming at thinkers like Aristotle himself. On the other hand, Bacon's method minimizes the role of mathematics and the mind, and believes that all scientific discoveries should proceed through a process of observation, experimentation, analysis, and inductive reasoning, in order to apply the findings to the universe as a whole. He truly believes that we have to guard against what he called idol of the mind, or the categories of false knowledge which slows us down and clouds judgment, and they are as the following. First, Idols of the tribe. Errors that are caused by limiting the human senses, which he sees as our access to nature, and the tendency of human nature to overemphasize the reality of nature than what it actually is. Second, idols of the cave. Errors caused by misconceptions inherent in an individual's thoughts and previous biases and prejudices. Third, idols of the marketplace. Errors due to the problem of language and the confusion of words and terms. Fourth and lastly, idols of the theater. Errors arise from received systems of thoughts that were passed down by past thinkers, such as the Aristotelian methods of syllogistic argumentation. It is important to know that although Bacon sees the value of reasoning, he wanted us to approach science in a way of the bee, which combines observation with reasoning and through experimentation we can arrive at a conclusion that is close to the fact. Essentially, his new method is the foundation of modern day scientific method and can be summarized as following. First, acquiring empirical observations. Second, performing systematic experiments. Third, analyzing experimental evidence. Fourth and lastly, using inductive reasoning to propose the most general notions. Up next, we have René Descartes. He was born in 1596 and is a proponent of rationalism, which is the belief that there are ways that we can gain knowledge independent of sense experience and that knowledge can come from innate ideas, reason, and deduction. While Bacon believed in inductive reasoning and empirical model of scientific discovery, Descartes believed mainly in deductive reasoning, recall the definition I gave earlier, and rational model of scientific discovery. He also believed that the universe was like a huge machine, and if you were able to understand the basic laws of the universe, you could deduce how anything will act. 
Descartes' Discourse on Method was his major work on the scientific method, where he proposed that all science become demonstrative as a series of valid deductions from self-evident truth, similar to the idea of first principles as presented in the ancient Greek thinkers, rather than something rooted in observations and experiment that Bacon would propose. He recognized that our senses can allow us to know all things in the material world. However, these things themselves have an essence or form which explains the structure of things. These forms, according to Descartes, cannot be known by our senses, but only by reason. Descartes did not agree with the previous methods in medieval science that were based on authorities from the past rather than the observation in the present, except for the field of mathematics, which he believed was created on a solid foundation. He was very much concerned with the deceptions of the senses, and he went on to rebuild a new system of truth in his discourse on method, which is all based upon the unquestionable and indemonstrable first principles. His method is developed based on the following rules. First, systematic doubt or Cartesian skepticism, which is to never accept anything to be true unless it is presented as certainly true or at least supported by sufficient evidence. Second, analysis, to divide each problem which one encounters into as many smaller parts as possible. Third, synthesis, to think in an orderly fashion which begins with the thing that were easiest to grasp and gradually reaching towards a more complex knowledge or solutions. Fourth, comprehensiveness, leave no stone in turn, or persistently test the general solution, reconstruct arguments and proofs of the model on the model of logic and mathematical reasoning, and assuring that nothing was left out. While there are differences between the methods of Descartes and Bacon, both of these thinkers question all of the methods that came before them. Both of them in their own ways demanded and proposed a new standard for precision. Additionally, they both share the similar belief of reducing a problem to the smallest parts as general principle. Up until now, I hope all my explanations about deduction, induction, as well as the overall scientific method has been making sense. And I truly hope that, you know, we can keep in mind that even though these guys are long gone, their work nonetheless has still has great effects in the modern day science world. And the scientific method could not have been here and we could not be using what we have without these great thinkers. Thank you once again. And I hope to reach you next time.